This is Campus News, reporting the top stories from colleges and universities. Next on Campus News. As Russia continues to wage war against Ukraine, emotions are running high around the globe. The ties a former MSU Moorhead teacher has to the war and why it hits especially close to home. Winter storms and blizzards continue to cause problems for Fargo-Moorhead area campuses. Why teachers and students are struggling to make up the snow days. After a historic hockey career, why one Concordia athlete says his points off the ice counted more than the ones he scored on it. A night dedicated to black culture is back at NDSU after two years. Why some say the celebration is long overdue. Good morning and welcome to Campus News. I'm Jenna Scott. And I'm Eric George. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues, Ukrainian Americans are forced to watch from afar as the war rages on in their home country. Reporter Mike McGurin talked with a Ukrainian woman with ties to MSU Moorhead dealing with intense emotions as her home fights for its survival. Martin Grindelin worked at MSUM for nearly 40 years, teaching classes in the School of Communications and Journalism and starting the campus newscast. He's been watching the situation in Ukraine with great concern. Very sad for me to watch it as someone who has been to Ukraine and been to many of these cities that are being destroyed right now. Like many cities in Ukraine, Kharkiv, home to over 300,000 college students, has come under heavy rocket fire from Russian forces. Martin's wife, Svieta, is from Ukraine and attended college in Kharkiv before immigrating to America 25 years ago. Her emotions on the invasion are raw, especially on the subject of Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. Putin, I don't know, but I, I just can't understand what, what kind of evil he is. Svieta takes issue with Putin for many reasons, but his claim of wanting to denazify Ukraine especially frustrates her. We have them in Ukraine, we have them in Russia, we have them here, but it's such a small amount of people. She fears for the future of not just Ukraine, but of the entire world, as Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky calls for a no-fly zone over his country. My relatives still there, my friends still there, but I'm just very worried about, I don't want to whole world disappear from this planet. Despite her fears of impending conflict, her country has her full support. After all, it's who she is. Um, yes, I'm here. I'm citizen of the United States and I have my family here, but I'm Ukrainian and my heart is with Ukrainian people. Mike McGurin, Campus News. Svieta says she supports international sanctions of Russia and efforts to arm Ukrainians, but she worries it's not enough to turn the tide in their favor. And while Ukraine is a country thousands of miles away from Fargo-Moorhead, reporter Laura Hovland shows us how college students and others in our community gather to show their support for Ukraine. In times of war and terror, peace, solidarity, and support for Ukraine can be found on the Veterans Memorial Bridge, which connects Fargo and Moorhead. More than 50 people held signs while honking traffic moved across the bridge. Over the course of four days, two events were held on Veterans Memorial Bridge in support of Ukraine. First, a rally, and then a candlelight vigil. Regardless of the chilly temperatures and merciless wind, Dozens of supporters from all walks of life showed up for each. They ranged from your average citizen. I just support people that need support. To people with family from the Ukraine, including NDSU student Alexa Sells. I have two cousins adopted from the Ukraine and two from Russia. Uh, I know my cousins have like friends and family who are in the Ukraine right now and they're pretty terrified. To Ukrainians from the area, like Dania Zubariva. I'm here only for a year, so everything I have is back home. All of my family, all of my friends, so everything I've ever known is back home. Many of us can't even imagine what it's like living in a war zone. People drink water from puddles and they hide in cold basements because there's no other way to survive. But this is what Dania and other Ukrainians, like Igor Svodursky, have been worrying about for weeks while their families are still at home. Some of my relatives are okay. Some of them under bombs. So I, some of them, I don't know 
what happened to them. But what can we do as we helplessly watch a war happen before our very eyes? Talk to your representatives, ask them to help Ukraine. And your prayers. Thank you. With photographer Abby McKay, Laura Hovland, Campus News. MSUM students who have concerns for people they know affected by the events in Ukraine are encouraged to contact the Center for Global Engagement. And masks no more. MSU Moorhead has recently updated its policies for masking on campus. The university no longer requires people to wear masks on campus. It's a mask mandate has been in place since fall of 2020. This is not the only change in campus policy. The vaccine mandate is also being lifted. This means that students living on campus will no longer be required to get vaccinated or be regularly tested. That starts on March 14th. North Dakota State University and Minnesota State Community and Technical College have also lifted their mask mandates. Concordia College, located in Moorhead, still requires masks. And stressful times require some stress relief, and coming together as a community is what MSU Moorhead students have done in light of recent COVID changes. Reporter Matthew Stewart talked with students about those changes and how it's impacting midterm stress. Students gathered at the CMU to listen to music and play board games. It meant even more to them because masks were not required for the first time in over two years. Student teachers like Rachel Loberg and Natalie Lindemann have not been on campus in some time. Without the masks, they say the sense of community has returned. I like the sense of normalcy of it. Like it feels like freshman, sophomore year again where there were no masks, yeah. there were no COVID regulations or mandates at all. So it's just kind of like, like going back in time, I guess, almost. People at the event noticed that smiles could be seen for the first time in what has seemed like an eternity. MSUM Dragon Entertainment Group's John Dvorak, a student at MSUM, organized the event, and he says he is happy that students are coming together again for more than just de-stressing. I programmed it for students like during midterm so they could just take a break, recover. We have board games for people to play, eat snacks. Another member of the Dragon Entertainment Group, Megan Syrek, who photographed the event, says she appreciated attending the event and is happy about the lifting of the mass restriction. It's like we're taking that next step in that in that building and regrowing that community that you know was kind of lost during COVID and to have you know the mask mandate lifted right before this event right before a community event I think was just perfect timing. Dvorak stressed what this event means to him and how much work he has put in to give students a way to calm down at stressful times. It gives them like a moment to relax so like take their mind off of midterms and stuff because during midterms a lot of people that's all they're thinking about is studying and this is a way that they can like just kind of forget about that for a couple hours. For students like John and Megan who have been here throughout, the lifting of the mass restriction means that students attitudes are improving. With photographer Nick Tabbitt, Matthew Stewart, Campus News. Dvorak says he's planning future events for finals week. And some surprising numbers about the pandemic and college students show how anxious and hopeless they may feel. Researchers at Montclair State University in New Jersey surveyed more than 4,700 students from colleges and universities across New Jersey and New York. The study shows that 75% of students reported feeling anxious with uncontrollable worry. 68% reported sleep problems and 60% felt hopeless. Many other students reported feeling worried about being able to continue their education because of financial reasons. And a new organization on MSUM's campus is spreading awareness on mental illness, and their first step is writing letters. Dragon's Mental Health gave students the opportunity to write notes to their friends and family battling mental illness. The organization gave students supplies like note cards and crayons. The goal is to share words of encouragement with others. President and founder of Dragon's Mental Health, Nicole Sandoval, says an event like this helps break the stigma around mental health. I hope people are able to come to this group and feel like that they don't have to like hide anything. Like we're all humans, we all have things going on and we're here to support each other in any way that we can. Students without anyone to send letters to can send them to Letters Against Depression. It's a charity that sends letters of hope to people all over the world. 
And students and professors are missing out on days in the classroom as freezing temperatures, snowstorms, and blizzards continue to hit the region. Reporter Katie Bartnick tells us how these snow days are affecting professors and students across MSU Moorhead. Recently, the Fargo-Moorhead area has been hit with blizzarding weather conditions, leaving students and professors at MSUM with five snow days since the start of the 2022 spring semester. Students like Abby Sibyl, who is from the area and sees winter storms like this every year, says that this semester the school cancellations have explained themselves. Um, well, considering that I could barely see when I walked outside when it was snowing, yeah, they were pretty justified. Luckily, many professors have been flexible with the workload assigned to students during these snow days. Professor of Communication Studies Dr. Teresa Hest says it's been very chaotic for her. It's just like, okay, here's the new schedule. Okay, now here's the new, new schedule. Uh, here's the schedule 2.0, and <laughs> here's the schedule 3.0. But Hest says she likes how the campus is putting everyone's safety first and that it's okay to cut back on the material covered during these winter cancellation days. And so for me, I'll look at maybe we're not going to cover this chapter. That was kind of an extra thing, but not essential. And so you just decide what's most the most critical material and cover that. Which leaves students like Sybil glad to have a couple days off from classes. But she's ready for the winter storms to be over. I want to be done with winter. I, you know, I live in Fargo, I should be used to it, but nope, I'm done. Completely done. MSU and professors like Hest and students like Sybil hope for no more snow days as we battle through the remainder of the winter. With photographer Brady Wacko, Katie Bartnick, Campus News. There have been six storms this winter alone in the Fargo-Moorhead area that caused closures and delayed openings. Dragon blood might run deep, but it also can help save lives. Reporter Jonathan Ness takes us to a blood drive at MSU Moorhead to find out why the drive is about more than the numbers. Today in the Comstock Memorial Union, multiple student organizations are working together to raise awareness for AYA lymphoma through the A Dragon's Blood Can Save Lives blood drive. PR SSA Vice President of Events and Fundraising, Tyler Duclos, says what AYA is and what a dragon's blood can accomplish. Adolescent, young adult lymphoma, so we thought a blood drive, because it's a blood cancer, would be a good way to, one, help people in need, and two, give a chance to just think about lymphoma more. Although storms interrupted advertising for the event, students were waiting and ready to donate their blood. But with blood in short supply, it isn't about numbers anymore. Carol Roth, director of A Dragon's Blood Can Save Lives, says anything helps. The need for blood is critical right now, so any amount that we are able to capture today will, be, will assist our community. Dragon's blood was flowing throughout the drive, but giving blood was only half of the event. The PRSSA wanted to leave students with a little more than just a bandaged arm and a cookie and try to take the information you learn from either the Kahoot or just everything that we are doing today and use it in your everyday lives. After all the efforts of the blood drive, organizers of the event hope students were able to be more aware of AYA lymphoma. With photographer Aya Takine, Jonathan Ness, Campus News. According to the American Red Cross, nearly 7 million people in the U.S. donate blood every year. Concordia College in Moorhead has wrapped up a nationwide search for its new School of Health Professions Dean. The school named Dr. Gwen Wagstrom Halas as the Dean of Sanford Highmark School of Health Professions. After graduating from Concordia in 1975, Halas earned a medical degree from Harvard University and a family medicine degree from the University of Minnesota. She is currently Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs and Professor at Washington State University. Halas also held positions at the University of North Dakota and University of Minnesota and provides decades of experience to Concordia. She will start in the position on July 1st of this year. Imagine having to condense your 80,000 word thesis down into three minutes and make it conversational for anyone and everyone to understand. That's what 25 graduate students at North Dakota State University had to do to prepare for the three minute thesis. Reporter Katie Bartnick attended the event and has more on why it's so important for future professionals. 
to communicate changes in research. McKenna Wagner, a contestant in the competition whose thesis was about social media's response to COVID-19, says it was difficult to make sure she stated all the key parts of her thesis in the three minutes provided. Lots and lots of practice. I've been a teacher, a TA for the last two years, so a lot of practice presenting in front of my class every day. The participants went through a preliminary round where 25 students submitted videos about their research projects. Each of the six finalists received $250. Patients with hypertension display high levels of MicroR21. Another contestant, Yue Shen, who did her thesis on how a drug can affect blood pressure in rats, says that she lost some of the importance in her thesis because it had to be conversational and more like everyday talk. Shen also described it as a new experience for her and that she learned a lot about herself. Personally, I'm kind of like an outgoing person, but I never dare to like step out. But then this really gave me a chance to really find myself. Even though Wagner and Shen didn't win, they say that they are proud to have made it to the final round to showcase the work that they have done. Incredibly proud to represent Concordia and NDSU today and um, all this research that I've spent the last year working on. I'm very proud to, to be here and participate. The winner, Kishore Chidamale, who presented research on reconstructing the gut for healthy aging, took home a prize of $1,000. With photographer Brady Wako, Katie Bartnick, Campus News. Some of the other thesis topics presented were breaking the chain of forever chemicals, monarch conservation in North Dakota rangelands, and protein intake and muscle health. After nearly a month, the Concordia Choir is finishing out their regional tour in their hometown. Their last concert of the tour is tomorrow at 4 p.m. It will be at Concordia's Memorial Auditorium. It's free for anyone interested in attending, and masks are required. After two years, the Black Student Association at NDSU is celebrating their culture once again. Reporter Gracie Jackson tells us why the association's president says this annual event is so important for the community. After two long years due to the pandemic, the Black Student Association at NDSU gathered once again to enjoy an evening together. The Black Student Association president, Kayla Jones, attended this event two years ago and was looking forward to another good turnout. I knew almost all of them personally and I know what they can all bring to the table. And they're all older, so I've seen them perform like two years ago and then I see them now and I was like, I just can't wait to see what that change looks like for each of them. And the energy from all the performers were felt throughout the whole room as the audience clapped, snapped, and hollered all through the night. This year, Kayla shared a personal piece of poetry I am black, I am strong, courageous, made up of history, art, culture. I am black and I am proud. When I first performed, I was a freshman, the very first time I did, and I was so quiet, I was so shy. Aside from a night of making memories, this event is important as it shows how the black culture comes together with everyone in their community. Sophomore Cynthia shares it is important for the community to know about her culture. It's important because it makes Others know who we are and where we came from, and um, also for ourselves, it reminds us where we came from. With photographer Jenna Scott, Gracie Jackson, Campus News. The Black Student Association also regularly works with the Office of Multicultural Programs for discussions on black culture. And now we turn it over to Jordan for a look at this week's sports. So Jordan, I hear uh, Concordia hockey players ending something of a legendary career. State of Hockey continues to provide. A historic Cobber hockey career comes to a close in record-breaking fashion, hitting a milestone not accomplished in over 30 years. Reporter Josh Boyko takes us to the ice to see it firsthand. After COVID cut the 2021 campaign to just two games, many seniors feared that their last season had come to a close before it started. But the NCAA Council granted an extra year of eligibility for Tyler Bossert and thousands of other athletes allowing them to have a full final season. Yeah, it would have been a little disappointing, you know, play hockey for a lot of years and then to have it come to an end on a two-game season, that was pretty sad overall. Tyler used this opportunity to lead his team to the Mayak quarterfinals, and he scored his 100th point of his career in the playoff game. 
it's really nice in college. Some of the, sometimes you can spend you know four years together with the same with the same line mates, and that can make a huge difference being on the same page. Despite becoming the first hundred point scorer in over thirty years at Concordia, Bostrick had other more memorable moments in his career. Probably the things I'll remember the most about it are just the team events that we do. You know, rookie party, Halloween party, things like that are they're almost more fun than the actual hockey. Bossert's impressive 33-point season will conclude his collegiate career with exactly 100 points. With photographers Brian Stenberg and Jordan Austin, Josh Boyko, Campus News. Bossert now will turn his focus to finishing the golf season this spring. A familiar face is sticking around the University of North Dakota football's sideline. Head coach Bubba Schweigert signed an extension to come back to the Fighting Hawks. Coach Schweigert's extension with the team has him at the helm until 2025. In his eight years as head coach, he has three playoff appearances, including back-to-back -back showings in the 2019 and 2020 seasons. The 2020 season also brought a Missouri Valley Conference title to Grand Forks. The NDSU football team is bringing on three new coaches to the herd. Lewis Walker from Monmouth University is the new cornerbacks coach. Seth Hesnes is coming on as the offensive quality control coach, who is an offensive graduate assistant at the University of Minnesota. Brett Watson, a former defensive line coach from the University of the Incarnate Word, is now the new defensive quality control coach. The previous quality control coaches recently accepted coordinator jobs from two other Division II teams. After a major win for the MSU Moorhead men's basketball team in the NSIC tournament, it's time to find out who they'll play in the national NCAA tournament. Players, coaches, and supporters gathered at the Moorhead Buffalo Wild Wings to find out which team in the region they'd be up against. The Dragons are heading into the game as the number six seed and they'll take on the number three seed and defending national champions, Northwest Missouri State. They've got a great program, great coach, um, but we're a good team, and uh, I think we'll look forward to the challenge. That game is today at noon at the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls. NDSU Athletics is welcoming a world-famous basketball team to its court. The Harlem Globetrotters are bringing their Spread the Game Tour to Fargo on Friday, March 18th, and this won't be your typical basketball game. The Globetrotters bring theater and comedy into their style of play. Fans can catch the exhibition game at 7 p.m. in the Shields Center at the Sanford Health Athletic Complex. Tickets start at $30, and you can find them on gobison.com tickets. Concordia College Golf has a piece of brand new equipment that could be a game changer in getting a step ahead of their competition this offseason. Reporter Abdullahi Hashim gives us a better look inside of the team's new golf simulator. Player one ready. This spring, the Concordia College men's golf team is trying to break records. I think our ultimate goal is to win a MIAC championship. Um, MIAC is our conference. Uh, Concordia has never done so. The players say they want to achieve new goals and reach new heights as a program. They will have some technology on their side. A golf simulator they brought to the campus. It gives the players the chance to practice during the cold winter months. I came like here for like a little visit um, when I was still a senior in high school. He just mentioned that it was kind of in the works, um, a simulator. Uh, not a whole lot of detail um, was given, but uh, you know we kept thinking about it and we kept getting donations from donors, which was uh, which was very huge. Now, Jensen say he and his teammates use the simulator about five times a week if his classes allow him to do so. With the simulator, it allows everyone to get feedback on their swings and how to improve them. And with the simulator, you know, um, how far you're hitting it, where you're hitting it, I think that's just super beneficial. Um, and to get full or get swings year round is, um, I think it's going to be huge for all of us, yeah. With the golf simulator at Concordia, the team hopes that it will help get an edge on their competition. With photographer Glory Angoma, Abdullahi Hashim, Campus News. The golf simulator has over 150,000 courses for the golf teams to use and practice on. It's quite a neat piece of equipment they got over there. That golf simulator sounds like something I'd like to take a swing at. Thank you, Jordan. Concordia Theater took the opportunity to discuss real-world issues in one of their recent productions. I talked to performers about how they gained a new perspective from their characters. I object! I object! The play is called Third. It takes place on an unnamed college campus right when the War on Terror began in the early 2000s. Lori Jameson, one of the main characters, is a left-leaning liberal arts professor. Woodson Bull III is her right-leaning student. When he writes a paper for her class, Lori Jameson accuses him of plagiarizing. 
I didn't steal this paper. The committee will be in touch with you. This pins the two against each other for the rest of the production as they argue over the paper. Lizzie Ortmeyer plays the role of Lori Jameson. She says her character is angry with the new war and takes it out on her student who has a different political standing than her. Why can't I hold what's in the third accountable? So when she sees a student who kind of for her represents this other side, she makes some really strong presumptions about him even though there's nothing that he's done. Jackson Peterson plays the part of Woodson Bull III, otherwise known as Third. He says it is exciting to play a character that is so different from who he is off stage. Having to work that out and like be someone completely different on stage was just such an interesting experience that I was like, yes, I want to do this. Peterson says a play like this can teach people how to see things from a different point of view. You see something one way and somebody else sees something another way and just like stepping into that character has really helped me like see that. There are only five performers in this play. They practiced for just a month and a half before showtime. The next performance by the Concordia Theatre Department will be in early April. They will be performing a play called Almost Maine. And that's it for this edition of Campus News. We leave you with more performances from NDSU's Afrique. Thank you for joining us and have a great week. Campus News is produced by the Television News Workshop in the School of Communication and Journalism at Minnesota State University Moorhead in cooperation with Prairie Public Television. Oh,